Welcome to the R Video Tutorial Quant Mod Part 5, Prediction Bounds. We're going to use bootstrapping again with the Quant Mod package like we did in our last video and the video before that. And a lot of the code is exactly the same, so if you haven't went and looked at that code or programmed it in, you're going to need to do that before you jump into this one because I'm going to pick up where I left off there. Okay, so I'm going to read in my library, and you can see the results are still over in my uh results over there. I'm going to read in the library, read in the data. I'm going to create the histogram of the results, which is our empirical distribution, which is what we're assuming that our returns will follow. I'm starring off the last value like I did before. And I'm creating a blank plot window because I like this picture over here. And I'm just trying to give you a refreshment of what is actually going on here. So well, this is where we left off. And we got some trajectories on there. Now what we want to do now is actually store these trajectories. We want to store all 1,000 of them. Because if we do, then we can get empirical quantiles off of each of these. And then we can plot those, which will be way cooler than what we're doing now. Okay, so let's give this a go. So what we need is a container. And if you remember, whenever you do a loop, you always need a container unless... Well, actually, we always need a container unless you're not worried about saving anything. Uh, last time, it was the picture. Okay? We're, that was a container for our results. But here, we're going to actually store off each and every result. So I'm going to call this out1 again, even though I called it, well, I'll call it out2 because in our last one, we had out1. So I'm going to make this a matrix. Okay? And I'm going to fill it with zeros. And I'm going to put the number of rows is equal to the... Uh, 1,000, which is the number of simulations we're doing. And the number of columns we're doing is equal to 12. And the 12 comes from the fact that we are, if we come down here and look, we're going to go out 12 weeks. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to store each one of these off. So and we're going to have 1,000 rows of 12 columns so that I have all the forecasts in the future. So all I need to really do now is take the value that I have and store it. So let's store off the value. And here I'm going to call this out2 again. And this is the ith one. But it's row i, so I need a comma, right? It's going to go into whatever columns it goes into. But I'm going to store off value2. And we're going to see if it works. Because it may or may not. But this should store it into value2 into our out to in each row. So let's just give this a run and see if it works. And it's going to create another picture over there, which I liked anyway. So let's give this a go. And then we'll look at out to. So it's running. It has blown up. That's always good signs that it didn't blow up. All right. So now I have this. It has all my trajectories. But I now have out to. And I can actually look at out to. Maybe. It's not letting me look. Oh, there it is. So here are the actual trajectories, okay? You can see them. You can read each one. Each one of these is a different trajectory. Uh, and this one I would just panic over because it's way going way below my 150. But I'm not worried about that right at the moment. I just want to get the quantile bounds. Okay, In a previous video, we looked at what's the probability or finding the frequency that we would go below 150. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to get the bounds out of this thing. So I'm going to call this my uh, bounds1, okay? And I'm going to do quantile. Well, actually, I'm going to use the apply function. Uh, the apply function is great, and I'm going to do val well out2 here. Is going to be what I'm going to run it on. I'm going to run it down the columns, across the rows, down the columns. And I am going to use the quantile function. And I want specific quantiles out of this. I want the 0.0. 0.25 is if I was creating a confidence interval, 0.5, which is the median, and the 0 0.975 uh, quantile for these. Okay, And what this is going to do is going to give me bounds that, that I can plot on top of what I have here. So I can actually look at bounds. Now, bounds is probably easier to look at. So there's a 2.5, 50, and 97.5 percentiles. So I can just simply plot these things right onto my picture, and I can see what these bounds look like off into the future. Okay, so let's do that. Let's add some lines here for each of these. So I'm going to do lines, bounds 1, if I can get it to work. 
And I'm going to go from, uh, let's see, bounds one. And I need the first row uh, because that is the two and a half percentile. And then I'm going to make the here, the color equals, I don't know, green. Uh, make it sea green. And I'm going to make the line type too. And let's see if it works. And I can pretty much tell you it's not going to work because I don't have the x-axis values associated with this. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So if I try this, it's just going to bl blow up at me. It's going to go, ah, uh, this doesn't work. Uh, well, it didn't blow up. It just didn't plot anything, which is completely useless anyway. So what I want to do is I want to get these time points off that I'm going to need in order to plot this on here. And if you notice where this starts here up to where it ends. So I need to make sure those match up, which I did not do before. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I didn't do this before. So what I can actually do here, if I want, I can turn this into a time series, just like I did here. Okay, so let's do that instead before I put the lines on. So I'm going to make this a TS, and then I'm going to do bounds one comma, one comma, and then I'm going to call this my lower bound, LB1, lower bound one. And then I will actually put LB1 down here. Okay. Everything should match up if I did this right. So LB1, and if I run this, let's see if it puts it on here. And sure enough, look, I have a green line there. I'm going to do the same thing for the upper bound as well, but it you could do this with a bunch of copy and pasting. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this. Now I'm interested in the upper bound. So this is going to be UB. And UB here. And when I do this, it will put on here the upper bound. And you can see it show up on the picture over here. And then I can also put in here copy and paste that again. I'm going to put the second one in. I'm going to change this up a little bit on the way that it looks. I'm going to put this as dark blue, if dark blue is a color. I'm going to make that, but then I'm going to change the line width to th maybe two, make it a little bit fatter. Okay, so it just looks a little bit different. And we'll see, and I'm going to call this, uh, this is actually the median, so I'm going to call this M1. So this is the median of all these trajectories. And what this is going to do is this is going to produce this picture. So you can see what the median is doing based off of where we were. This is my panic line, right? One, 150, because if it goes below that, I'm just going to panic. Uh, this is the green line, which would be uh, the lower bound and the upper bound on these are like predictive intervals. So I have predictive intervals on where this stock will go to in the future based off of the returns that I had from the empirical distribution. So this is based off the empirical distribution. What's going to happen across the next quarter for Apple? Is this really what's going to happen? Who knows? They could come out with a great product or their product could tank or all kinds of things could happen. But if I'm just using my empirical data, this is what I would expect to happen to Apple in the next quarter, across the next quarter for each week. So uh, this has given us the information that we need. We can run with this. I would highly suggest you go back and comment this code. I'm purposely not going to comment it because the video is already running long. But go back and comment it. But look, you can take this and you can actually get quantiles for these trajectories for some sort of predictive performance. All right, so we'll stop here and move on to the next video where we actually deal with more than one uh, time series or one stock at a time. Okay, see you there. We'll